What's going on guys? Welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to go over function. Even though most people think that these function questions are really simple, they can get pretty tough. However, if you know the definition, if you know how to interpret a function, then you're going to be able to solve every single one of these function questions, no matter how hard they are. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is John and I've been an SAT tutor for the past decade and this channel is all about summarizing exactly what you need to know about the exam so that you can minimize the time that goes into it and maximize the result that you get out of it. So if you're into that kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel. Today we're going to go over three things so that you won't miss another function question on the SAT again. The first thing we're going to go over is the definition of a function, how you can interpret a function on the SAT question. Second, we're going to go over how you can recognize that you're dealing with a function questions on the SAT. And lastly, we're going to go over the three different types of function questions that are easy, medium, and hard level. So make sure you stick till the end and understand how to solve every single one of these function questions. And if you're ready to get started, smash the like button and let's get straight into this video. So the most important thing that you need to know when it comes to a function question is your ability to interpret a function. When it comes to a function, you are always going to have a X and a Y, okay? And X is what gets plugged in and Y is the result that you get out of it. So for X, where is the X? There's X right here and there's X right there. So for instance, if X is equal to two, that means it's going to be two here and it's also going to be two here as well. Now, where is our Y going to be? But if you think about it, the functions that we are used to seeing is equal to Y is equal to two X minus one, okay? What's the difference between G of X and Y? There's no difference. These are actually the exact same thing. They represent the exact same thing. The benefit of using G of X is that, let's say we're talking about G of two, for instance, then we are looking for the Y value when X is equal to two. G of three is referring to the Y value when X is equal to three, because these are your X's and the whole thing represent the Y value. And how do you find the Y value when X is equal to three? What you do is you just plug in the X value into the function and just find the result. And that's going to be your Y value. So for instance, it's going to be two parentheses, three minus one, which is six minus one, which is going to be five, right? So G of three, is going to be five. Whenever the X is equal to three, your Y value is going to be five. So to summarize, here's what you need to know how to do. If the question gives you something like F of six, what it's asking you to find is the Y value when X is six. And how do you do that? You just plug in six into the function and you find out the Y value and that's going to be your answer. Does that make sense? And next, let's go over how we can recognize these function questions. And it's actually really simple. All you need to know is that they are going to give you some kind of function and it's gonna ask you, what is F of something? F of something, G of something. If they're asking something of something, it's going to be a function question. If you go to the second one right here, they also give you a function and they're asking you to find out what F of minus two is. And we know F of minus two is referring to the Y value when x is equal to minus two, right? And how do we find that? We just plug it in and we just find it. Simple as that. These two were actually the easy version of these function questions because all you have to do is just kind of plug it in. But how does the harder question look like? It's gonna look something like this. It's not going to give you any equation. It's not going to give you any function. And, but they're only going to give you function notations. F of three, F of two, G of five, things like that. And you're gonna to have to know how to interpret these notations in order to answer the question. And now we're gonna go over every single one of these questions. So let's go to the first one. Here's the easy version. The question is asking F of X is equal to minus two X plus five. And it's asking us to find out what F of minus three X is equal to. And f of minus three x, what is that? It's just asking us to find the y value when x is equal to minus three x, right? When minus three x is plugged into the function, what's your result going to be? That's what the question is asking. And how do you do that? You just plug it in. So f of minus three x is going to be equal to minus two parentheses minus three x because that's what the x is going to be plugged in as plus five. And if you distribute it, you're going to get six x plus five minus minus cancels out becomes a plus. And we know that F of minus three X is equal to six X plus five. And that's going to be our answer. So our answer is going to be choice B. Does that make sense? Simple as that. All you have to do is interpret a function. That's it. Let's go to the next example. Okay, medium question. In the function above, B is a constant. If F of six is equal to seven, what's the value of F of minus two? So it's a similar question to the last one. So all we're gonna do is plug into the function. F of minus two is equal to three over two parentheses minus two plus B, okay? And that's going to be minus two cancels out, becomes minus three 
plus b okay so f of minus 2 is minus 3 plus b but none of our answer choices say that actually if you look at it every single one of them doesn't have a b it's just a flat out number which means we have to find out exactly what this b is equal to plug it in and find out the answer but the problem is how can we find out what b is so let's go to the question f of x is equal to 3 over 2x plus b right and for sake of simplicity i'm just gonna write this into y is equal to 3 over 2x plus b and our b is right here and to find out what b is we need to know what x and y is so that b is the only unknown variable and we can isolate it to find out what it's equal to but we have to ask ourselves how can we find out what x and y can be well let's look at the question in this portion right there it says f of 6 is equal to 7 right so if you think about it it's telling us that whenever the x is equal to 6 our y value is going to be 7 because the f of 6 as a whole represents the y value when x is equal to 6. so we know that our y value can be 7 and our x value can be 6 which means x equal to 6 and y is equal to 7 is going to be a set of numbers that can be plugged into this function right there so if we plug it in we get that 7 is equal to 3 over 2 parentheses 6 plus b and that's going to be 7 is equal to 3 over 2 times 6 which is going to be just 3 right here and it's going to be 9 plus b and we know that b is going to be equal to minus 2 and now that we know what b is equal to we just plug it back into this function right there and we're going to be able to find out what f of minus 2 is which is what the question is asking you to find so minus 3 minus 3 minus 2 is going to be minus 5 and that's what f of minus 2 is equal to which is going to be our answer right there so all of these function questions come back to one thing and that is the definition of a function and your ability to interpret a function notation so let's move on to the next question and let's see a function f satisfies these things right here and a function g satisfies these things right here and the question is asking us to find what f of g of 3 is going to be and this question is considered hard because it doesn't give us a function where we can just plug in numbers to find out what the answer is this one is actually testing whether you know how to interpret a function and because we do we can probably solve this question super easily so if you think about it f of g of 3 what we're looking for is the value of the function f when g of 3 is plugged in however what we're used to seeing is finding something like f of 2 not f of g of 4 or having like a function like that so as long as we can convert this function notation into a number this question can be solved easily so let's think about it f of g of 3 so g of 3 is plugged in but what is g of 3 g of 3 is going to be same thing as let's see it's going to be same thing as 2 right and because g of 3 and 2 is the same thing that means we can just kind of swap them out so whether we have f of g of 3 in it or f of 2 in it they're going to be the same thing because g of 3 and 2 are essentially the same thing and if we can find out what f of 2 is that's going to be our answer and the question tells us that f of 2 is equal to 3 right so f of g of 3 is same thing as f of 2 and f of 2 is same thing as 3 which means 3 is the same thing as f of g of 3 which means our answer is going to be choice b does that make sense so this one again came back to the definition of the function and your ability to interpret a function notation and as always guys if this explanation was not detailed enough there's going to be a link to a private lecture in the description box down below and that lecture is going to go even more in depth into step-by-step -step guide on what you need to know for these function questions so you are fully prepared for the exam and to make this even better there's going to be a set of practice questions on functions and these questions are from the actual sat so whether you are shaky on the concept or you just want more practice for these function questions you can always go down to the link and print out these set of practice questions and try them out yourselves and that's going to be it for today's video guys if you guys have any questions or comments leave it in the comment section down below i would love to hear what you guys think about these videos and as always thumbs if you liked it subs if you loved it and i'll see you guys on the next one bye bye